I don't know. I think I've played a long time, so nothing. Unfortunately, nothing really phases me. Uh, not that it was in a good way or bad way. It was just it's kind of something that happens in this business. Uh, and I'm quite a few pay grades away from uh, making that decision or right. even being in that room where that decision has really happened. So uh, my job is when I come out to practice, hey, whoever's back there. And guys say it all the time, even at receivers, like if you're out there, you're the starter. Uh, and I've seen myself kind of build into that where I wasn't the starter but trusted myself to be one until I got that moment. So same thing. Uh, it's Diddy's mind, you know, now he's getting an opportunity to make the most of it. Thank you. Yeah. Mac, what do you see from Jared Stidham as far as what he brings to the table and what do you like about his game? Yeah, Stidham's great. Um, you know, I've thrown with him plenty um, off season, in season. It's not like he's. this is his first time kind of being in, in the game or being with the receiver. So I'm excited for him to get an opportunity to, to show what he can do and try to make as many plays as he can and lead us to victories. And in practice, do you see uh, no drop off in production from him from the mental reps that he was getting as from the scout team and now being the starter? Is there no drop off from that perspective? Uh, I mean, obviously, we've only had one practice. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't, I, I don't really think to see a drop off between any of the quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. They're, you know, I think our coaches do a great job in making sure they're all ready, even, even uh, garbs, like to make sure he's ready if his opportunity are ever to come. So I think all three quarterbacks are mentally always prepared. And then also moving on to the San Francisco 49ers, the defensive back group is very strong. They have a strong safety there named Talano Hufanga. You're probably very well versed in him. What does he bring to the table and some challenges that he provides on the back end there? Uh, I think he's a great player. Uh, you know, I think they have some really good DBs, really a, whole, a good defense, a good team. Uh, so my job every week is to prepare as best I can for whoever I play. Uh, and I never try to overestimate anybody or underestimate everybody because I think that's where you can kind of get lost in your preparation. So I'm just going to continue to try to make sure I'm as prepared as possible for this defense. All right, thank you so much, yeah, no Appreciate you, Pam. We got Juan Strasse from the Dark Star of East Horn Sports Review. Thank you for joining us today. I just want to get, gather your thoughts on the, uh, getting acclimated to NFL speed and um, now being elevated to the active roster. And the last two games here, what, do you, what are your expectations or what are some of your goals as the season nears at the end of 2022? Um, yeah, um, luckily I've been around for a little bit, so I know how the speed is and uh, uh, adapted to it really fast. Uh, you know, I was a little banged up, but um, got back and felt really good in practices. Uh, and like the last two games of the season, just take it one week at a time. So it's four nine is just another challenge. And just like like we said it today, um, we still have a chance. And uh, something that's really really special in this league is if you still have hope, you know, and a chance to play meaningful games. And at the end of December and into January in this league, it's it's don't take it for granted. So uh, we still, we still have, we obviously have a chance. Um, and it's just like you're playing Monopoly with your with, with your buddy at home, like being competitive and we're lining up and. Uh, play some football and just do whatever you can to, to beat them. And one of the things the, the 49ers would like to use that wide nine scheme, what are some challenges that provides for you as an offensive lineman when they play so wide out and they can really rush the passer and pin their ears back? Yeah, they, they, they do pin their ears back and they do, you know, run straight up the field. Um, it's obviously very challenging, but um, as old linemen, you just got to, you know, get your feet in the ground. Uh, don't get caught uh, stepping too, too long. Um, and just get after them with the pad level and being explosive. Um, they're obviously very, very talented, and I think our tackles are going to do a hell of a job with those wide nines. And um, you know, we just got to you know execute and play play really hard. That's really one thing about your game is your family money sound. Winning in the leverage game, you talk about pad yeah. level. Um, now let's, switching over, you have a new quarterback under center in Jarrett Stidham. Uh, what are some competitive advantages that he brings to the table when you have a quarterback like Jarrett as opposed to a guy like Derek? Yeah, well, well obviously, um, love Derek very, very much. Um, it's, it, it is unfortunate, but it's, it's this crazy business. Um, and that's for us as a lineman, whoever they put back there, we're always going to protect them no, no matter what and do everything we can to keep them clean. And with uh, with Stiddy, he's, he's been around here since OTAs. and. He's been the assistant for a while, um, so I mean, I have a hundred percent all the faith in the world in him, and he's been doing it all year in practice. He's been doing it to our scout team, so I'm really excited for him to uh, show everybody what he can do. All right, thank you so much, Ron. Appreciate, appreciate you. Thank you. Munford here from the Dark Side of Beast Horn Sports Review. And there, thank you for joining us today. I just want to talk about your rookie progress as we near toward the end of the year and what your learning experience has been in year one. Um, my learning experience from. Year one, of course, is you know it's a whirlwind for me. Uh, it's kind of like a learning curve, especially from you know having a, like a, I'm all my career having a winning season to not having a winning season. So it's been like a toll on me. But you know just understanding um, it's 
part of the business and everybody's good, but you know, you also got to do the little things right and you can't really slack on anything. In the last two games, um, are you anticipating more playing time or have you earned that playing time throughout practice or what are your expectations uh, over the course of the last two games? Uh, to be honest, I'm, I'm with whatever, where they put me at. Um, if Jermaine or Cohen goes down, I'll be in, you know, but you know, I'd be practicing with the best and they'd be helping me out a lot too. So any, anything that goes, I'll be ready. During earlier in the year, we talked about the speed to power conversion. And that's something that you said that playing in the Big Ten has helped you because there's no drop off from production from that standpoint because there's a lot of pros that you know transition from college to the pro level. Um, now that obviously this rookie year is coming to an end, um, what are your expectations going into year two as it pertains to your sophomore season? Um, basically just being more more adult wise so I, so I can just focus on myself focus on the team focus on what I need to do to better myself to actually start for, for the year, whole year you know but yeah, he also can get, get Sam Webb over here <laughs> of course but you know uh, in all seriousness so it's just to have that right mindset just to be right you know be right and be confident in myself alright well thank you so much there I appreciate you Pam appreciate it